Hello everybody, welcome to my interview with my dear friend, Martha, who's in Singapore. She's a relationship coach and a clinical sexologist who has a wealth of experience. And today I'm going to ask her, what is intimacy for her? And how does she use it in her work? Yeah, so intimacy to me has to do with a sense of closeness with uh, yourself or with someone or many persons. There are many types of intimacy. A lot of times people assume intimacy means sex. Intimacy equals sex. Or intimacy, uh, physical intimacy is another word for sex. I really, I really detest that. <laughs> Because I feel that we should use the correct words and the correct terms for what we mean and not be so afraid of using the word sex. Uh, so to me, intimacy, there are so many types of intimacy. There's intellectual intimacy where people talk about philosophy and uh, panels and debates, which whew, uh, is very much about in, uh, mental intimacy. And then there's emotional intimacy uh, connecting with your friends and talking about your life and like what's troubling you. Then there's physical intimacy, which um, may not involve penetration. It can involve even just cuddling and just really feeling that the person is present it can also be uh, um, physical intimacy in that form and all the other shades of physical intimacy. And then there's spiritual intimacy. So it can happen when you're singing in a choir together and you feel united with everybody there um, or, you know, in church, praying together. So we do have uh, experiences of physical, uh, spiritual closeness with people that may not even involve touch of um, the body or genitals. There's no touch and you just feel so connected with these people. And often you may get that sensation when you are meditating and doing loving kindness meditation and sending love and light into the universe. And you just feel so connected with the whole universe. So that is um, what I would consider spiritual intimacy. Um, I remember this, this um, memory of uh, me dancing on the dance floor and uh, with my friend and uh, both of us identify as heterosexuals and both of us were just dancing with each other and just vibing off each other and suddenly we were we were actually having um, um, sex <laughs> um, not physical rubbing rubbing but we were having sex with the whole room because it was like first it was the connection between the, uh, the two of us and the the, the playful um, uh, um, a childlike energy between us just fooling around and just play, playing and then just vibing off each other and then just starting to uh, dance together in rhythm and then suddenly we felt connected with the whole room and the whole room just felt like this whole big expansion of what we were having this little cocoon and suddenly it was the whole room was there and then by extension the whole universe so we were having like i i was having this really amazing um, experience of oneness with the whole universe just from the experiencing of first connecting with one person and by extension to the room and then the whole universe. So it is possible to have orgasmic, aesthetic, transformational experiences in crowded spaces. It all has to do with where you're at and your intention. Thank you. And how do you bring that into your work? Um, I do this for myself all the time. Um, in my work, I make sure that I establish intimacy with, uh, with my clients through this very simple practice that uh, I have been doing for the last 11 years. I'm not sure how it started. Um, I think it was when I, when, when I was doing counseling training and um, my teacher at the time was actually mentioning like we need to set ourselves up to prepare ourselves for um, to prepare ourselves mentally for the, the session to come and so one of the things that my teacher shared was like uh, the one of the things that can help you to prepare yourself for like transitioning from uh, matter the, the person to matter the therapist or matter the counselor is to get into that headspace of I am a counselor now. So 
the the practice that I did for the last 11 years was I I would make sure that I have a little bit of time between clients and I would visualize my client on the way to the office and how the client must be feeling or might be feeling uh, going on public transport and what they're feeling and coming up the stairs, what they might be feeling and uh, um, the decisions that I make to have my A game uh, to be the person who will not physically but uh, energetically hold, hold their hand and support them for part of that journey uh, to have clarity and um, so that to me is a form of intimacy because before they step in, they do not realize this, but I've really made the decision to love them, to love them unconditionally, to prepare myself uh, mentally and energetically for whatever needs to show up. So sometimes I actually even send them love and light um, before the session. And I would usually set the intention of may they feel safe and may they uh, open up, may they um, get whatever they need from me for this session. May I be of service to them. So I'm already sending love and light to them. And, and that is my way of prepping myself so that we have in, in, immediate intimacy. And it's amazing, you know, clients come in and they just, they just share so much of themselves and what's going on in their inner worlds that often I, I feel that it's such an honor and privilege to um, be able to do the work that we do. Oh, that's beautiful. Really beautiful. And, you know, I'm, I'm hearing that obviously intimacy works on many levels and, and, and it's not just about sex. And I entirely agree with you. And also that uh, when, when you're working with clients to create that, you have to allow an openness to create the space for intimacy. And I think that's very important in any aspect of intimacy. It's about creating the so space. How, how, how do you, yes, thank you. So how do you have intimacy with someone when you are not ready to be 100% there for them? So it's making a decision to be open and vulnerable and do whatever it takes. And doesn't mean that I'm manipulating them or making them. It means that it's being very, very uh, clear about when do I self-disclose what is useful and only self-disclose very selectively in support of the client, not because I want to share, because I love to talk about myself, but only sharing the parts that will be of the highest good of the client. And absolutely support them in their journey. Yeah, we absolutely. hold their hands for a time, and after they leave the session, we have to energetically give them back their lives and not continue to hold on to them or to be over responsible for them because then we are not going to be able to have a life of our own. Yeah, and absolutely. And, and, and the purpose of them coming to you is to become self-sufficient in that, that particular aspect. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you.